Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So we're at one of my testing facilities that I've quickly put together to test out which is the best small ship weapon. And this is something that I'm debating with players all the time, and they're telling me their favourites and giving me feedback. But the first thing I'd like to say before we get into any testing and discussing the statistics of these weapons is having a mass amount of any particular weapon on the ship will really kind of just overwhelm the statistics of the weapon individually so having 100 gatling guns facing one way yes it's going to rip a ship in half having 100 rail guns yes it's going to do the same thing but we're going to be having a look at them as individual weapons deciding which is the best weapon to put on your ship we'll look at factors such as the weight the mass the production um what the actual rockets and weapon ammunition required to build how many bits of ammunition you get per box so you can kind of work it out from there and then at the end we'll tell you what's my favorite and i'll be really straightforward about it so there you go that's the idea of the video so how do the damage mechanics work in space engineers well it's all about the components the components that go into each block's construction so for this one we have 20 steel plates and five steel plates to make it functional and this one we have a singular steel plate over here we've got construction components and each of these have their own integrity so, for instance, that one with 25 steel plates, a steel plate is 100, so that has 2,500 hit points. So, having a look at something like a Gatling gun that does 90 hit points to a block, it would take quite some time to chew through that. But the small block on the right here, we have one steel plate, and one steel plate is worth 100, as that says there, and since it's firing at 90 damage it should leave it with 10%. Let's hop outside and just double check that and make sure the game is actually working. So we've got a Gatling gun, a single shot, and just to double check, we have light armor. So there we go. This should take it down to 90%, and it does. So it means that we have got some sort of baseline. I've tried to test all these stats, and some of them have come from various different sources, and I'll link the charts and whatnot as we go through. So first off, we have the missile launcher, and I'll try to give you a bit of background and a bit of my opinion to these. Now, the missile launcher is probably one of the most underestimated weapons in the game. This is what I call a brawl finisher sort of weapon. When you have these, you're not going to be wasting the shots. I see a lot of players waste them at the beginning of the battle trying to get lucky hits with the missile launcher because the missile launcher does do 500 damage, so it can put quite a hole in a small ship or even um, a, la a large grid in some cases. So four or five missiles and one of these guys is out of the way. So we can actually just have a look at the volume so you can see it does take quite a large amount of space. I believe it's the largest amount of space of any of the projectiles. Yeah, so 1630. And yeah, so that's the largest volume, the missile container. And it's not the heaviest though. The heaviest is the shell. So you can see that the shell for that cannon. And the lightest is of course the railgun sabot. So some things to think about there. But yeah, the missile launcher is all about getting a final hit. Say you get a little bit close to the enemy ship as you're brawling, as you're turning around in circles, let off a missile launcher, imp impose some giant damage, that 500 damage, and you will win a fight. That is how the missile launcher is used to win fights. Of course, you've got the reloadable and the non-reloadable. I think the best thing to do is put the reloadable one on, and then you can have a cargo container. Of course, it has to be a large connector to feed the rockets through. That can be a little troublesome. Or attach a small one and just keep it reloaded between battles so it's quite a well-rounded balanced weapon but if you get a good shot off or you use it at close range that's my recommendation for it you will destroy an enemy fighter and become victorious so that's all the information on the missile launcher right there so moving on to the auto cannon. The auto cannon is hands down what I'd like to say the best weapon in the game. It does um, 250, if I'm correct, more damage points per minute um, than the Gatling gun. Because these are the two that are usually rivaled and the players are like, yeah, the Gatling gun's better, yes, the auto cannon's better. But statistically, uh, the, the auto cannon is better for damage per, per minute. So as we have a look down our statistics, you can see it has 16 rounds per one of these magazines. So it's not got as many as the Gatling gun. That does have 140 rounds, but the damage is making up for that. Uh, the mass, of course, of that ammunition clip is a little bit heavier. Um, the volume is also larger as well. And you can see, though, it does a damage of 500. 500 seems a little bit extreme for the autocannon, really. I think we need to quickly test this, to be honest. 
so I've quickly put a test together. We'll blast it off and we'll get back inside and continue the discussion. So yeah, 500 hit points that single auto cannon round is doing. Now that is absolutely mad. Now I wouldn't know, it's not saying mad like in overbalanced or underbalanced or whatnot. I'm saying it does the same damage as the missile launcher without the splash, splash damage. And that is the exact reason why I feel the best combo for small ships for pretty much every situation unless you're doing something specialized like long range targeting or dealing with uh, hydrogen men, auto cannons and large rocket launchers are perfect for the job. So like I've said, I have caught a lot of battles happening on the server. And what I thought was really interesting about this one, this is exactly what we're talking about, Gatling guns versus auto cannons. And these are two players with different skill levels and skill levels, of course, do play into effect here, but you can see exactly what's going on here. So you can see the Gatling guns are spraying all over the place. But the damage is winning out with the auto cannon. You can start to see that every single hit the auto cannon lands on the target is ripping that small grid apart, where the other ship isn't sustaining much damage overall. Of course, this is just uh, in this case it's it's two ships, so we can have a quick look at this one. So this is the one with the auto cannons. These are of course auto cannon turrets that do the same sort of damage. But you can see there is no damage at all left on that ship compared to the other one that has been forced to retreat. Anyway, back to testing. So, I know there's still so many advocates that really believe that the, Gatling, the small ship Gatling gun is far better. Because it's got 140 rounds per box, it has a high rate of fire. But that high rate of fire is let down by its low damage. Yes, you can land lots of, target, uh, lots of shots on a target, but if we just quickly nip over here... Yes, if it's a small, a small light armored ship, you could rip it apart in seconds with Gatling guns, and that, that's awesome. Yes, if you're targeting small, lightly armored ships, then go for the Gatling guns. But if you're de dealing with heavily armored ships, it's going to take round after round. And firing at a moving target, I've seen it happen so many times. Gatling gun players just just ping all over the ship, doing minor amounts of damage, where a single auto cannon shot landing on target will weaken the hull of that small ship with the heavy armor so going in a little bit closer if we actually have a look at the construction a lot of players are, are in favor of the gatling guns because they, they believe they're cheaper but not by much so we've got two steel plates two construction components and four steel plates on top everything else is the same if i remember correctly let me just not measure the the table by mistake yeah so it's slightly cheaper but it's it's not really notable the, you're getting far more, more value out of the auto cannon. So going over to ammo, I know something's uh, something that you guys talk about a lot. So production ammo, we have the auto cannon magazine that uses iron ingots, nickel, magnesium powder. So yes, you could get this from a, a normal world up and going. Comparing that to the ammo box, it's the same resources. So you you have the uh, the option to add an auto cannon really from the beginning of your playthrough. Um, so that's something to consider there as well. So if you're still advocating for the Gatling gun, let me know in the comment section below, why is it better than the auto cannon? If you're thinking the auto cannon is still the best, let me know your tactics with it. So over here we have the range weapons. So the railgun at that I was extremely worried about on release. And we have the assault cannon that is actually surprisingly more deadly, I believe, than the railgun. So the railgun fires this tiny projectile with super high penetration. But very, um, I won't say I won't say low damage, but it's it's got a very tight, narrow field of view. So you'll pierce a hole if you, for instance, fire at a small ship. It'll go straight through the small ship, ripping it apart with its eight thousand damage and po possibly hitting a vital component. And people, are, I can hear them screaming in the back, going, "Yeah, the railgun's so badass!" But landing a shot in a battle with this has been the the, the, the doom pretty much of many players I've seen them try to line up a shot rather than just rattling off shots with the Gatling guns rocket launchers or higher rate of fire weapons and they've lost the fight because of it uh, the assault cannon is not really much better in any sort of dogfight these are for pummeling static bases and large ships and that's that's all they're good at you could take out vital infrastructure around a base or an AI controlled outpost with a railgun delete the turrets from a distance away since you've got the range advantage um, but yeah you won't be picking off fighters or Gatling gun men with this and plus the power draw 
is something you need to take into consideration. And with a lot of ships now being powered by batteries, just because it's, it's, it's easier, um, yes, you can you can charge them up with small reactors and whatnot. Um, yeah, you're going to suck all your juice out with that. So if I was going to go for a long-range weapon, I think it would be the assault cannon. Um, for half the damage, quicker reloading time, um, a little bit heavier in terms of shell. So that's my opinions, and that is why I believe, though, the auto cannon is the best weapon in Space Engineers. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, strangely enough, as we come over here, though, the the <laughs> the, <laughs> the radius of the warhead block is 15,000. If this doesn't scream out from Keen that would like you guys to make your own weapons, we'll give you this warhead, put this warhead in a weapon, build it into some sort of... A device or, or something um yeah that that's a big screen for help and even in the small version the only thing that changes is the radius so try building some of your own missiles and weapons that utilize the warhead and you'll find that they can be extremely effective not so much against small ships or in small ship battles you can sometimes throw them off the back as like a little sensory minefield it, it just depends on how you you can build but in a standard fight the auto cannon is taking the victory Anyway, let's thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this discussion. Let me know what you think about small ship fighting in Space Engineers, and I will see you next time.